And so the tool that I have experience using and that is, is more publicly available, has had more adoption uh, within this field is COBRA, um, Constraint-Based Network Analysis. Um, and there may be another word in there that um, where the R comes from. Uh, and you can see this nice illustration from a review in 2012 that depicts all the, the many different versions of this platform, uh, as well as uh, different approaches, different tools. So for example, if you wanted to do something in an unbiased manner versus a biased manner, um, you know, this is almost like a decision tree of like, uh, you could go this route or this route. Um, if you have a, an interest in um, looking at gene deletion um, or reaction perturbation, um, well, here are some tools. Uh, and of course, that's sort of under the idea that you've, you've done some engineering to a strain. Um, so here are some tools that are specifically around deletion. Um, this uh, op strain, I guess, is more focused towards reaction addition. Um, op knock and some others. I mean, a lot of these tools do the same thing. Um, part of the idea of having more of an open source approach to the development of, in this community uh, of these models is this idea that you might have multiple people propose uh, very similar or sometimes, uh, again, subtle but, but uh, differently performing methods. So if you want to be rigorous and uh, unbiased about how you're using your tools, you might, you might use a few of these and see if they give you similar production. Uh, predictions. Um, but they're all based around this idea of stoichiometric matrices for all of your different reaction fluxes and some knowledge of, um, usually a lot of knowledge of um, experimentally measured fluxes. So I'm going to, before, so while I'm still on this constraint based network analysis, I'm going to share my other screen and take us through. Um, what these look like. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm gonna ask a question. Did you, do you guys see a different screen now or do you see the same thing? Different. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so um, what should be appearing, although it's a little weird that I can't see this, but um, it is uh, just a browser page um, for uh, something called the BIGG or big models. Um, this is a, a, a platform based out of UC San Diego um, where Bernard Paulson is a professor and he has had a lot of alumni work in the space um, and his lab has grown into something more like a consortium almost. I mean, I think there's a link to um, his lab specifically systems biology research group but this site is um, just a really large repository um, kind of emphasizes its uh, open sourceness there's some escher maps and we can look at uh, one or two of those um, and there's funding from from these different centers um, uh, some of which are international like this denmark right here uh, novo nordisk um, so what you can do is you can take, say, your favorite organism. Let's just say this isn't my favorite organism, but a very important one, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Um, and so I can just type that in and I get results. And in this case, there's only two models um, for Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is interesting in that yeast is such a common engineered platform. Uh, as a reference case here, these are both the same strain of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And the way that these uh, model names work is it's usually, uh, it always begins in I and then it's the initials of the person who contributed the most to the model. And the number after it uh, usually reflects the number of genes that are captured by the model. And so we can, we know that the 904 model is, is more new. I mean, the number of genes really only rises. Um, people don't tend to get rid of them. I think they do um, every couple of years update these models and remove bad reactions, but, um, but they really update and usually have more, um, more is generally better for, for these kind of systems. So um, you can see here, um, there's 
information about the number of metabolites, reactions, genes, and you can download a COBRA model. Um, and I'll show you what one of those looks like. Um, there's a link to a publication. Um, and then here's an Azure map. Um, you know, this is just a, a particular visualization software tool that works really well for thinking about fluxes. And so this is an image that I don't think is nearly representative of all of the, um, you know, 1500 reactions that are known to occur in this model in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. But it does have a pretty detailed, um, you know, depiction of ethanol metabolism, which is really important um, in yeast um, and the TCA cycle and all of that. Um, so you're used to seeing some graphics that are likely more manually generated in the slides um, from this course and logic scores, but um, it's nice that this program can, can generate one for you. Um, and so if by comparison, so I told you that two um, didn't really seem like much, um, for comparison, let's, let's see what happens when I search for E. coli. Um, so if I just type in Escherichia coli, I get this list. Um, and so this reflects um, the fact that there is perhaps more interest in not just E. coli, but in a variety of specific E. coli type strains. E. coli C, W, uh, DH1, SC15, et cetera. And some of that may reflect the fact that this community has been pretty plugged into bacterial species and also in trying to use flux balance analysis to perhaps better understand pathogens and to then um, design uh, maybe metabolic interventions um, that, would, that would target those pathogens. So if we take uh, a pathogen, I don't know, let's try mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis, for example, um, and see, so there's, <laughs> The search is kind of interesting in that it brought up Helicobacter pylori, another pathogen, and Geobacter metallurgicans, which is not a pathogen as far as I know, but an organism, a bacteria that's used for metal reduction. Um, you can see that there's just as much information here on, on uh, Mycobacterium as, as there was um, for Saccharomyces cerevisiae, although there are fewer genes. But it's important to know that um, an organism like Saccharomyces cerevisiae actually has more genes than, than E. coli uh, 